Okay, this is try two, round two. Going to see if I can get this done a little bit better without any horrific audio problems or my flash drive catching on fire like it did last time. Uh, this is going to be a quick video on how to 3D print. This is just a real simple, completely useless part I have made called the toadstool. It does nothing. You could put it in your toad enclosure and they'd have a happy little fun place to sit. That's it. It's worthless. So let's figure out how we're going to do this. The first thing we need to do is going to be exporting the file. I'm going to come over here to File, Export, CAD Format. I'm going to come down here to STL. I'm going to set that as an STL file. If you've never done this on your computer before, really important that we hit the Options button right here. This whole menu should pop up. Once that's popped up, we want to set it to high resolution, and we want to make sure, make sure our units are set to millimeters, as you can see it is there. Once I have that done, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to give this a name, Toad Stool. Make sure you spell things wrong. Uh, that gives you bonus points. So that is saved. Now, because of the way our district computers are set up, sometimes it can be a little bit confusing to find this software right here. This is Dremel DigiLabs 3D Slicer. Generally, I have to go to the search box, type in the word Dremel, then it will pop up. If you've never opened it before, it's going to ask you what 3D printer you have. Once you've done that a couple of times, it should remember that you have a 3D45. So if it's your first time, you might have to check that, okay? Once we have that done, I'm gonna delete this object. I'm gonna put a new one in here just for you guys, okay? Come in here, find out where you saved it, find out how badly you spelled it. Hey, look at there's the old one that isn't spelled wrong. That'll work. I'm gonna open that up. It's gonna pop in here. When it first pops in here, it's gonna be in the most horrendous orientation of all time. To move around and look at the horrendous orientation and how sad and depressing it is, you use the right click button. Oh gosh, this is terrible. It'll never print like that. It's just gonna tip over, whatever shall we do? Well, we're gonna select a part, come over here to rotate. You have a number of different tools here, rotate, scale, move, go to rotate, click on the part, rotate it, and it should be in a happier orientation. One thing that's worth noting is if I do rotate it a little halfway like this, I can use the lay flat tool, which is super helpful uh, in kind of tricky to orient parts. You can drop that down. Once I have that done, I'm in a happy orientation, I can right click and I can multiply selected models. Please note that it multiplies in a way that doesn't really make much sense to me. For instance, one times two is how many? It's two. I have their three. Don't love that, but it works. You know, you just got to know that going into it. So there that is. Once I'm ready to slice, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select the material to figure out what material you're using. You should figure out what 3D printer you're using. Nine times out of 10, it's PLA now. Sometimes we still run some ABS. So most likely it's PLA. Figure out what quality you want to run. Medium quality is a 0.2 layer height. That's pretty standard for 3D printing, and that will be pretty high quality. If you try to go to higher quality, it's going to take twice as long. Low quality is really not worth doing. It doesn't speed it up that much. So medium quality is kind of my standard. Um, once you come down in all these things, there's not all that much that we really need to talk about here other than generating support. Right now, as you can imagine, this 3D printer will print this whole thing beautifully. But if I come over here to rotate and flip it over like this and do that, you can imagine the 3D printer, which is just like a hot glue gun, is really going to struggle printing plastic out here in space. In fact, what will happen, this will droop down. The nozzle will just pump plastic out of everywhere. You'll end up with a cube with spaghetti on top of it. It's not great. Sounds fun the first time. It gets really old really fast. So we're going to want to generate support. So you hear, see I have that checked. I can hit prepare now. If I come over here to layers, I can actually drag my way through the part and see each layer it's planning on printing. That's really helpful in determining how it's going to print, what it's going to look like, all that sort of thing. If, on the other hand, and you're trying to get out of this thing, come on. If, on the other hand, you have a part like this where you can just use your common sense and orient it in a way that works well, you won't need to have support turned on. You can uncheck that couple other things here. Infill. Infill determines how much plastic you're going to use. 
it's something that needs to be really strong, we're going to want to turn the infill up. Generally, we try not to go over about 50% infill. If you get to the 60s, 70s, and 80s, there really is a diminishing return, meaning you're just not going to get that much more strength from going from, say, 70 to 80% infill. At 100% infill, stuff really doesn't print that well. So something to be mindful. There's going to be a lot of shrinking, a lot of warping. It's not great, okay? Really, a better way to improve the strength of things is to turn up our wall thickness to make the wall a little bit thicker, okay? Um, generally, I like doing that using wall uh, count, but I don't see that laid here, so this will totally work. You can just change this number to be a little bit thicker, okay? It's going to impact how many layers it prints, okay? Uh, how many layers uh, sideways it prints, essentially. Okay, for right now, we'll leave this right at one millimeter. Um, once I'm happy with all these settings, I hit prepare. It will slice the model. I can go over here and look at the slices if I really want to, make sure everything is good. And then I can hit save to removable, okay? This software does a really, really good job of somehow figuring out that you have a flash drive plugged in and being like, you're probably gonna save to this. Nine times out of 10, it's right. So I'm gonna hit save to removable right now. And you can see... It has saved a removable. I can now unplug my flash drive. I can go find one of these printers. I can plug it in. Once you have it plugged in, you're going to go to the middle where it has a little picture of a USB. You'll click there, scroll down till you see the name of your file, which often is kind of confusing, right? It's going to, this is what it's telling you to look for, D3 toad stool. okay? Once you find that, you click on it, you click build, and it should start printing. Always a good practice to coat the build bed with uh, one of the purple hot glue sticks before you get started. It's gonna allow your print to grab a little bit better, especially if it's a big print, okay? Hope this was helpful. Good luck printing. Let me know what you need.